Katrina, what does it mean to you to captain your own Karingai team in the Mobile League? Um, well, it's a bit of fun with such a great bunch of girls, but um, being with Karingai Netball Association since I was 12 years old, it's, it's makes me very proud to be captain of the team. Nerida, if you weren't playing netball, what would you be doing? Uh, if I wasn't playing netball, I'd probably be breeding. <laughs> or maybe I'd procreate. No, I'd just probably be having a family, that's all. Marianne, how do you balance your responsibilities as a physio with your netball career? Well, it's a bit like this, it's a juggling act, but you manage to organise your time and I work at the Children's Hospital in Sydney and they're just fantastic to me, so luckily it works out pretty well. Now for ABC viewers, we have a very rare treat. I found a very rare species of goal defence here, as opposed to the goal attack. She's so rare because she's had two very horrific knee operations. The way that we spot this particular creature is that she has a very unattractive looking scar here on her right knee and even more unattractive looking band-aid here on her left knee, which is pinching her skin on top. But we have a very important question to ask her today. Alison Williams, perpetually injured goal defence and goalkeeper for Sydney St Ovis. How have you found coming back from two absolutely horrendous knee operations in the past two years, you poor dear? <laughs> well, Elizabeth, it's been very hard. Um, the second one's been a lot easier than um, the first, of course, because I'm a lot older and I've got the support of my friends and my family. I think she's trying to say she's more mature. <laughs> and I have the support of you <laughs> and all my teammates and um, it's been really good, so I'm hoping to get back soon. Joe Conway, what is the Novus best at? Well, last year quite a few of us got married, but more recently we've just won our touch football grand final. Sharon, what makes Katrina Wag a good captain? Um, well, besides encouraging every single player and um, giving them lots of help and feedback at training, she leads by inspiration on the court and often pulls off some great intercepts when the team needs them. That's all. We're here with the three blonde musketeers and I'd like to know how valuable it is to your netball careers to play with international players at such a young age. Maybe I'll go first. Um, I think it's been a very good learning experience for all of us. I'll speak for everyone. Um, not just to um, travel and play with them, but to grow with them as people. I think they're a great bunch of girls. Um, I've learned a lot more other than just my netball. Um, <laughs> we won't evaluate on that one. We'll just keep going. Um, what do you think, Beck? Um, I think, yeah, I've learned a lot about netball, but also they haven't been just teammates, but good friends. They've always been really supportive. <laughs> Happy Christmas, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marianne. Happy birthday. And Mary Ann McCormick ate it all. Mind you, if anyone can run it off, Mary Ann can. Now to our competition. This is the last week you can enter. First of all, let's bring you our winner from this week. And it's congratulations to Helen Maloney from Maitland in South Australia. She correctly identified Perth as the venue for this year's Netball Nationals. The goodies will reach you shortly, Helen. The autograph ball, the shirt, the drink bottle, the anorak, the ABC cap, the Mobile League sports bag. And this week's question, what is the maximum width of the lines on a netball court? Is it 45 millimetres? Ring 0055-60524. If you think it's 50 millimetres, ring 0055-60525. Or is it 55 millimetres? Ring 0055-60526. That might have you scurrying off to your rule books and you have until Wednesday to make your call. Now to our second match, and Melbourne and Sydney Sonovas could find themselves hitting the court together again in a week's time in the semi-finals in Adelaide. They're lying second and fourth on the table at the moment, but Anne Sargent, neither team has had a particularly happy week. No, ironically, both teams have had quite a mixed lead-up to this match. Melbourne uh, rejoiced with the return of Janine Lynch to the court, but unfortunately Ingrid Dick lost her father this week, and that's been felt quite strongly by the Melbourne girls. Uh, for Sonovas as well, a, a strange lead-up. They're able to get Alison Williams and Ragnar Gilmore back into the pack, but they've lost Katrina Wagg through illness. So I think the lead up somewhat of a leveller for both teams, and it's really hard to predict how they'll react going into the match. Safe to say that Melbourne does have the home crowd advantage and that it's going to be a super game. 
Some real selection quandaries for Norma Plummer with Lynch and Howie both available. In attack, Eloise Southby and Danny Arnott will share the shooting and Michelle Benison slides in at wing attack. At centre is Ingrid Dick. Skipper Simone McInnes as usual at wing defence and the circle defenders are Lynch and Jenke. Melbourne's midcourt depth and versatility is epitomised by Michelle Benison. The 24-year-old medical rep has come through the AIS program and she's comfortable at wing attack or centre and her shrewd netball head on young shoulders have seen her awarded with the vice-captaincy of the team. Well, like Melbourne, Sydney Sonovas have a long break since their last Mobile League game, allowing Reagan Gilmore a full recovery from the ankle injury sustained in Sydney. It's Stuart and Cox up front with Sharon Hill at wing attack instead of Katrina Wagg. Marion McCormack runs the centre with Gilmore wing defence, Alison Williams goal defence and Liz Ellis at goalkeeper. It's not Julie Fitzgerald's preferred starting seven. Reagan Gilmore is one of Newcastle's finest netball products. At 178 centimetres, she's not the league's tallest defender, but her tight, aggressive play has worried the best goalers in the game. She's made many state and national underage teams and was Australian under-21 vice-captain in 1994. No trouble telling these teams apart. Melbourne in the blue and running left to right. Well, maybe the key contest, at least as we look to the right now, is uh, Liz Ellis and uh, Eloise Southby. That certainly is going to be one of the matchups of the game. It's Danny Arnott putting the first one in for Melbourne. Cox to McCormick. Uh, Jan Cross, Nola Kalman looking after this match, and uh, Marianne McCormick just put a foot over the line. Janine Lynch uh, back on court after her injured hand. She's, of course, last year's Norwich Netballer of the Year. And I think put there to Mark Cox, given her height. Well, talking to Norma Plummer before the game, she really felt that uh, she's got the depth on the bench to run who she likes. And, um, and what a luxury having uh, Liz Taverner on your bench. Jenke has played so well throughout the series when it looked a year or so ago as though her representative career was over. Well, she's really struggled with her back injury towards the latter part of her career, but uh, she's handled this series really well. Melbourne, too, I know, uh, had a great uh, run in their state league, their domestic competition against arch rivals Key. They really focused on their start. And they opened up a sensational start, putting, uh, I think, 20 goals up in the first quarter. So they've been looking to address their start, particularly since Sydney Energy uh, crucified them in an earlier match. And that should be a feature of their game here. So Sydney Sonovas on the board. A couple of minutes gone. But really, they, they're going to suffer the absence of WAG because they've had to move their uh, centre court around so much. Sharon Hill, I think, has had a great series of wing defence. And we really feel like that's been her position, at least this season. And now she finds herself suddenly at wing attack. McCormick at centre. And, of course, Wag had the potential to be one of the few wing attacks in the competition that could test them. And McInnes Wag would have, uh, uh, in terms of her um, physical build, really had an advantage over McInnes. Yep. Sorry, Ellis Jennifer, to Gilmore. Jennifer, sorry. Well, Gilmore will be who takes it. And she finds herself out of position a little too. She's been used to goal defence and she's at wing defence. So a tough uh, match to settle into for Sydney Sonovas. So we wish, uh, by the way, Katrina Wagg all the best back in Sydney. She's a bit unwell. Be a nervous game for Alison Williams too, testing out uh, the recovery of her knee. She's endured two knee reconstructions in her short, tiny life, one on each leg. And uh, this is a, a, a healthy how do you do, back to netball. Benison, oh, and three quick hands, <laughs> Arna to Southbeat. Oh, Sonova's caught with her hands flapping, trying to stop that one. Cox, Hill, Stewart, Sharon Hill to McCormick. And well played over the top for Catherine Cox. She's been able to make herself available on a few occasions quite easily. It's Jan Cross, the umpire, setting the uh, position at the post there for Nerida Stewart. A oh, great elevation from Lynch and the backup from Jenke. McInnes, Benison. And over Lynch. 
Means it had a bit on it. <laughs> Loose cannon from Benison. She's normally uh, quite uh, tight in the delivery. That one nearly took net. And Meredith Stewart was out. So back it comes to Rosalie Jenke to recommence play. Where you are. Four minutes gone. Four three. Sydney holding the narrow lead. Ingrid Dick to Simone McInnes. Arna to Benison. Defender. And the hand's not there for Southwick. So Ellis. Gilmore. Misunderstanding there between Williams and uh, Marianne McCormack as to who was the outlet player. Have Williams is a little lost early on in this game. South B. Oh, double team. <laughs> Liz Ellis smiles in disappointment. It's such close timing when you mount a challenge like that, and that one just took a bit of hand, said Nola Kalman. Five minutes gone, 4-4, four, four. Southby. Well, it's Arna. a really, really full and appreciative crowd here at Waverley. And that's why Zana puts another one through for the home side. McInnes had the pace to run with Cox there. Williams to Hill. McCormick. Cox. It stood the challenge there, got a little bit of a bump and a, and a good contest with Lynch. Cox has opened well with four from six. She's the highest scoring goaler on court so far. Instruction, shot or pass. Arnott looking comfortable in goal. She's three from four. McCormick, Cox, Stewart. Congestion at the top of the Sonova circle. Still is. Hill really needed... Oh, sorry, it was McCormick. They needed to free the top of the circle a little earlier. It was Hill prior to her, and they look quite similar. <laughs> Both fast. Play. Both ponytails. Neither of them exceptionally tall. Both were inc inconsiderate enough to get married in the off-season and change <laughs> their names. Sharon Wheatley and Marianne Murphy, they were. Yep. Southby. And it's a two-goal lead now for Melbourne. Oh, nice roll from Benison to find the drive to the top of the circle. Oh, but Ellis, the reply. Gilmore. Williams. Out comes Lynch. And they thought it might take her some time to get back into a stride. I don't know about that. Norma Plummer said she had half a game uh, the other night. Looked very good. Wonder if that's the intention in this match to share duties between Taverner and Lynch, give them both exposure to the game. A great even first quarter here as Sydney look for the leveller. Really wide placement for the centre pass then. Cox had brought herself right to the sideline. Hill was nearly on the opposing sideline so that the drive would be mid-court. It worked well. Stewart can't quite work out why she uh, hit the floor there. Just a foot went from under it. Looks a little unhappy. Meanwhile, it's uh, Danny Arnott. Oh, an unforced error. Step called against Danny Arnott and uh, won't say what she said, but she didn't agree. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Is that what she said? <laughs> Along those lines. A little more succinct. <laughs> and Catherine Cox puts Sydney back in front. Well, there's a lot resting on the game, and both teams are equal to the challenge. Play on, says Jan Cross. It was probably a hell ball by the time the players understood what was going on. Doesn't mm. matter. It was a little untidy. It left a lot of them uh, querying the core. Cox has opened well. Seven from nine, so she's uh, put the workload out from the beginning. Melbourne with the numbers. Benison. Arnott. Williams. Good timing on the jump from Alison Williams, but Arnott is in good form going into the match. Four from five. I think that's as good an opening as we've seen from uh, Danny Arnott. She's usually shooting around mid-60s, 67% across the series. 
She's been a little tentative, but uh, immediately you can see she has a rhythm. That was a sweet shot. She's doing well to keep Jocelyn Bryant on the bench. Okay, goal defender, shot or pass. The lead swings back to the home side with 5.50 on the clock, first quarter. Stewart. McCormick. Stewart for Cox. Burnage break, wing defender. And a cross court to McInnes. Southby. Andrew Dick. As Gilmore closes in, Southby. Oh, brave Arnott. offload from Southby to Arnott. That's what the crowd was hoping for, a close game. And they'll be hoping for a Melbourne win after a close game. It was McCormick's sheer speed that opened up that ball to Catherine Cox. Hill's just playing a little close, little too close on the ball. She's playing a bit of a chasing game and closing down some spaces. Nevertheless, considering they've had to, to fill the hole left by Katrina Wag, it's a fine start from Sonovis. From Melbourne too, who have had some upset in the camp. McCormick to Cox. McCormick and Hill just uh, running the same way at times. Good work from Rosie Jenke, but she was offside as she uh, tried for the intercept. Free pass taken by Gilmore. Cox able to keep it in court. Jenke to Lynch. Well, good hands from Arna to Benison. Obstruction. Obstruction. Shuttle pass. I say Melbourne looking very good, pretty fluent, not too many uh, mistimed moves up the court. No, timing certainly is a feature of their game, they're very even down the court and I don't think we have as yet seen the best they can offer in the series. I suspect they're winding up for the playoffs. Southby a sweet shot and Melbourne kick out to a three goal lead. Southby with just the one miss. She's put up seven from eight in the opening. McCormick to Stewart. Oh, Cox. That's a brave pass to her with two defenders there. But Catherine Cox has the height advantage on Jenke and Lynch. Well, both her opponents have pretty good elevation. McInnes. Ingrid Dick. Michelle Benison. Touch from Gilmore. Uh, Williams. But it leaves the court out of position and it leaves Ellis outnumbered. It's one thing to go for the intercept, but uh, if it's not clean, then you risk being out of position. Southby. Good stretch from Ellis, but not enough. Cormick. Hill. Stewart. Cox into the circle early, gets on hold very soon. She still has it, but Stewart shoots through. Hasn't left the court, she just shot through. <laughs> I think maybe we should change the viewer competition to um, pun of the week or, or worst of the week. Shuttle pass, back a step. Back. Bit of use of the elbow, says Nola Kalnan against uh, Alison Williams. Williams quickly blocks for the rebound, but no need. Arnott starting in confident and accurate fashion for Melbourne. As they have a three-goal lead with 1.45 on the clock. Hill flaunting with a three-second call then. Sonovas is just lost a touch of momentum in the last minute or so. I think for them to win, it's crucial that Cox stays in the game for a full effort. I think she has a tendency to uh, put in a great run and then ease off a bit, but they need her there 100% of the time. 
Megan Gilmore not appreciating the call, the contact against Benison. Oh, but great Ellis. position from Ellis. Really ran that front position. Stewart helps out Hill, who was running out of time and options, but uh, Janine Lynch says, I'm back. Well, that, that cross-court pass is probably one they'll think about next time. Benison to Southie. Ellis can't get around to the front position that time. Melbourne by four inside the last minute of the first quarter and with possession. Ellis was spewing forth some words to Williams, just letting her know about switching and combination in the circle because they haven't played together for a while. As you said, it was Gilmore in the circle prior to uh, Williams' return. And Sydney struggling to get the ball to Sharon Hill because uh, McInnes is just wearing it. It's one option shut down for uh, most of the time, it seems. Now she has it. And put the shot up quickly, did Nerida Stewart, because she saw the timekeeper following Jan Cross. And it was a timely last goal for Sydney Sonovas. So it'll only be a three-goal deficit that they see as they go to quarter time. Melbourne 16, Sydney 13. So after some hesitation about the centre pass, Marianne McCormick takes it for Sydney. Contact against Ingrid Dick. Now contact against Jenke. Let's look at these uh, first quarter stats. Pretty healthy all around. Possession fairly even between the two teams. 20 shots for Melbourne as opposed to 17 for Sydney Sonovas. Southby though in fine form. 9 from 11, 81%. Danny Arnott with a much better start in this match. 7 from 9 at 77%. Likewise with Sonovas, three from four for Stewart and Cox in great shape, 10 from 13 at 76%. Norma Plummer there, and to her left, Pat Chappell, the manager. Oh, nearly kept in by Marianne McCormick. Yeah, three more shots to Melbourne and three more goals in that first quarter. And I really th I think uh, they can be grateful that uh, Danny Arnott has chosen that first quarter to produce some of her best uh, form of the season. And they find themselves three goal leaders. At the end of the day, if it's a close match, they can uh, thank their first quarter effort, perhaps. Catherine Cox. Oh, through the hands. Sharon Hill wasn't expecting the bounce pass, I guess. No, and I think um, I, I'd still like to watch closely her game. I think there's still a lot of um, spaces being shut down rather than opened by Hill. As we said earlier, she's been playing well on the wing defence for them, and it's quite a switch. Oh, Simone McInnes had eyes for that, always. Well positioned to haul it in. It's back to the Sydney defenders to try and get the ball back once more, but it's Benison with it. Arnott now, and the contact call against Alison Williams. Arnott shoots truly. Turnover. A couple of times early on in the second quarter Melbourne have put themselves under pressure unnecessarily one was from Ingrid Dick that she slammed to Southby and it was never in place to take it that one really put Benison under pressure game so close you can ill afford ill disposal a lot of uh, checks and balances in this match if you like I think maybe McCormick's got the experience on Ingrid Dick but um, Simone McInnes has it on uh, Sharon Hill. That's true, and I, I think the game is balanced such that it's going to go right down to the last few moments. Arnott. Southby's just been caught standing a few times. She's made an offer, then stopped on it. She really needs to keep the movement going and some strength about her work oh. to keep herself available. Contact against Southby that time as Ellis, Ellis went up for it late and behind it. Southby has the left thigh strapped. I don't know whether that is hampering her mobility at all. 
Well, Cox did well to get her hands away from that one and it allows the Sonova's throw I think throw she, was, she was chasing it. I don't know that she was withdrawing them. She just wasn't up there quickly enough. Well, it's knocked in by someone then. <laughs> Julie Fitzgerald on the right, Sydney coach. And the deficit back to three. Contact keeper, you're causing. Outside. Contact against Jenke. Lynch forced uh, to cope with a two-on-one. Nice ball from Arnott to Benison. South be out. Oh, and quickly around Williams. She really put a step on Williams then and she found it easy. Great shot, Southby, after the quick hands from Danny Arnott. Benison here with the ball. Southby clears the circle by that move towards the top. Holds up and the drives there from Arnott. Great hands from her onto Southby, who steadies. <laughs> wasn't quite ready for that one McCormick a lot of passes not much progress for Sydney Sonovas it's a great effort from Janine Lynch looked like Cox had a set up for the hold and drop Lynch so mobile now contact keeper shot or pass finally a contact call against Rosie Jenke presents Catherine Cox with this one Three and a half minutes left in the second. A real tug of war going on out there between Melbourne and Sydney Sonovas. Well, fear is a great motivator. I don't think either one of these teams wants to play Sydney Energy in the uh, semi-finals in, in Melbourne, in Adelaide, next week. I think... Uh a little contrary to that, that we maybe place too much focus on number one position in the semis. I find the top four very evenly matched. And while Sydney have gone through undefeated, I think to place too much attention, particularly if they place too much focus on that, could be their undoing. Because I think some of these teams, their run is just coming now. Their form just starting to come into the semis. I think those semis are going to be uh, quite amazing. Gilmore. Well, oh, it towards the end of uh, the second quarter. Sydney looking to get back on level terms here. Stewart, important shot coming up. And a Sydney centre pass. What a boost it would be for Sonovas if they could take home a victory over Melbourne and still have Katrina Wagg up their sleeve. Cox. That was a casual shot from Catherine Cox. Getting more and more excited is Julie Fitzgerald. All right. And... Whoa, well, Benison was just standing in the centre third. She'd gone early, assuming the whistle would come sooner. Umpires made no attempt to clear it. They just called her for offside. Catherine Cox, eight from ten in the second quarter. It's a bit ordinary. <laughs> You're hard to please. Ten from 13 in the first. So the volume impressive. Oh, that one. She's just Adam. poking the man easily. Yeah, well, that was a bit flat, really. It only just crawled in. I think she looks very confident, though. There was no uh, consideration for the shot. Well, they've just opened up the Melbourne defence in the last couple of minutes, and they've opened up a lead, Sydney, having trailed for all of the second quarter except the last two minutes. Melbourne need a settler. Seven two. Melbourne have been outscored in the last uh, five minutes. They were leading 21-18. Now they're down 25-23. South be four from... Sorry, three from seven. So she's feeling the pressure a little in the goal circle for Melbourne. I think that's known as the Ellis factor. Good intercept moments ago from Ingrid Dick. If they convert here, at, we'll give them a little kick along as half-time approaches. Norma Plummer looking suitably worried. Catherine Cox. Jocelyn Bryan also warming up in the background for Melbourne. So a bit of movement on the Melbourne bench. There'll be a bit of movement from the timekeeper shortly. 
An obstruction against Catherine Cox, so it'll still be Melbourne ball. But they've got to get it down there quickly. Contact against McCormick. Oh, wiped out. <laughs> and she's advancing the penalty. After that uh, step in from Reagan Gilmore, shall we call it? Southby makes Sydney pay for their little lack of discipline there. Julie Fitzgerald gets out of the chair early. Wasn't happy. But it's 26-25 uh, to Sydney at half time. Marion McCormick in possession as we begin the third quarter. Uh, Cox gets it to Stewart. And a, a good second quarter for Sydney, which they won 13-9. We look at the stats. And just look at Catherine Cox. Goal attack for Sydney Sinovus, 11 from 13. She did the damage, 84%. Stewart fairly quiet, just the two from four at 50%. I thought Southby was a feature in that second quarter in that she really slumped down to 55. And she's been rock solid in other games. Danny Arn at two, just the four from ten, so really not making use of possession. And Melbourne a little lucky to retain it. Jocelyn Bryant is on for Southby. Liz Tavener for Janine Lynch. The two changes to tell you about. As Sydney bring it forward, Gilmore. Mary Ann McCormick under pressure. Well, late in that second quarter, well, in the last few seconds, a controversial moment as uh, Melbourne enjoyed an, an advanced penalty after uh, Reagan Gilmore incurred the displeasure of Jan Cross. I'll show you what happened late in the second quarter. Well, this, this play here leads up to a contact against... Marianne McCormick and Benison is told to come forward and play it. Gilmore steps in to try and defend the penalty and is charged down. And then the penalty was advanced to the circle, which was eventually taken by Southby. It was interesting to watch that uh, several of the Sonovas players and their coach appeared to challenge Cox about Jan Cross. I'm sorry about that decision before she could leave the court. You weren't privy to that conversation. Uh, certainly a little concern there. Play goes on and it's a one goal game again. Well, Danny Arnott after shooting in the 70s in the first quarter was down to four from ten in the second. See if she goes better with uh, Jocelyn Bryant working beside her. Jocelyn was uh, Victorian netballer of the year last year I think. Really strong club player and I think she offers a little more movement than Southby. Certainly I thought Southby's movement was really stifled in this game. Ellis having a fine match on her, keeping it very quiet. So maybe it's just today's not Southby's day because she's been impressive in other games. And I think we did pick the sharing of responsibilities between Lynch and Tavner early in the match. That makes sense. Bryant to give Melbourne the lead. Melbourne's positional change is reaping instant reward. Stewart, McCormick in some space. Certainly Jenky has kept Stewart quiet. Just two from four in the second quarter. And the challenge for them has been Catherine Cox. Well, what, uh, it's a big... Uh, responsibility and difficult task for Catherine Cox to play one half on uh, Janine Lynch and then the fresh <laughs> legs of Liz Tavener coming on. McCormick, Gilmore, Ellis, I think done by the umpires there, just let that one go as possession sorted itself out. Williams, needs some help from Gilmore. McCormick. <laughs> Hill <laughs> surrenders the ball eventually to the Melbourne defence, really mounting some pressure on the Sydney midcourt. Bryant. Bryant with an uncanny ability to slot in very comfortably, irrespective of the pressure. Benison. She's open with four from five. Mel good to beat. Yeah, Melbourne looking a little rejuvenated after half time. 
Venison tries to wipe away Alison Williams before she offloads. Shot or pass? Where you are? Eloise uh, Southby's uh, famous dad, Jeff, introduced to the crowd at half time. The dad, former Carlton footballer. Got a warm reception here. It's pointed out that he used to be known as the Carlton footballer and now he's known as Eloise Southby's dad. <laughs> sure, he's equally proud of both. Ingrid Dick, Liz Tavener, McInnes. Oh, Hill had a go, but it was through the fingers. Contact against Catherine Cox. Contact against Reagan Gilmore. There's a lot in this game. Furnish moving on. Oh, Brian, slick move along the baseline, and it's a four-goal lead. How did that happen? Sydney have only scored two goals in uh, over seven minutes of play. Contact on the ball. Burnage contact win defence. Bryant. <laughs> Should Jeff South be a degree that the uh, third quarter is off in the Premiership quarter? <laughs> and it's looked like it might be that way in this match. Cox. Tavener rebounds. Arnott back to McInnes. Benison now. Dick to Arnott. Bryant. Can't take it. A touch from behind by Liz Ellis. Williams clears it quickly by offloading to Cox. Now they slow it down. Not happening so easily this quarter for Catherine Cox. No, three from five. For Catherine Cox and nothing for Stewart. Reagan Gilmore has attracted a lot of whistle. And just a little bit of added attention from Nola Cullen as she warned her to hurry back and out of play. Arnott. Well, Danny Arnott seems to have put the second quarter behind her. Well, so does the whole Melbourne team. McCormick gets a good ball back to Cox. I think Sydney can win this if they go into the last trailing by more than five. Benison. was touched by Williams. Play. Justin Bryant, Benison, Arnott. And Bryant, Ellis. Oh, Eden. <laughs> Another one of those eating stats, eh? Stewart. McInnes got a look at it. But got the contact call. Cox. <laughs> Good stretch from Stewart. And she puts in a first for the quarter. There's five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Ten minutes before Stewart scored, or even had a chance to score. Now she's going for a second. And doesn't muck about with the second offer. And Sydney take a couple out of Melbourne's lead. Just to clarify for viewers, that miss from Stewart because it was pulled back as a penalty doesn't appear on the stats. If there is a miss and it's because of an obstruction or a contact and then the penalty is shot, it goes down as a straight shot. Shot for Jocelyn Bryan after obstruction from Ellis. Hill. Oh, hauled in by Cox up above the pack. <laughs> Could have been read as a pass from McCormick. Cox saw it as her own. And they just look to be settling a little late in the third quarter end. Ellis out deep, sniffing around for an intercept at the edge of the circle. Now she's back protecting the post, and uh, that's why. <laughs> 
Normal plumber might be worried about uh, Melbourne's either lack of concentration or, or fall off in form late in the second quarter and now a little in the third, although they're still holding on to a four goal lead and have got this one back. Maybe Liz Ellis has taken a little while to work out Jocelyn Bryant as she takes another rebound. Perhaps, but certainly Bryant has uh, had ample possession. 13 attempts. Tavener gets a hand to it and turns it over once more. The next goal is an important one with three minutes left. Yes, that was a belated call. I think Carlin playing the advantage, although I don't know that she'd called it, but McCormick had been offside quite a bit earlier. Now it comes back to be taken. Contact wing defender. The umpires are required to say if they're playing advantage. It's quite true, and I hadn't heard Calnan call it, but McCormick had certainly gone offside, but it was moments before. Contact this time against McInnes. 38-33 to Melbourne. Cox. Bryant, Ellis up and Arnott has it. Good stretch from Alison Williams, forces a missed shot from Arnott. She started out looking comfortable, but she's gone off the boil. Now she's looking at three from seven. Contact against Williams off the ball. This could be costly. I don't know that Williams even had the chance to get out of play then. She certainly hadn't assumed an out of play position. Ellis tries to save it. On 45, left on the clock, third quarter. Melbourne have turned a one goal deficit at half time into a four goal lead now. So it's definitely their quarter. Ellis draws a contact out of Jocelyn Bryant. Melbourne crowd, not convinced? I'm not convinced either. We, uh, we've been inclined to disagree with the umpires today. Very <laughs> disagreeable. We are, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ingrid Dick, Rosie Jenke, Sydney missed their opportunity. It's back with Melbourne. Had a passage like this in the second quarter where neither side could score. They kept turning it over and giving it back. This time, Arnott, perhaps. Well, again, Benison uses some touch footy skills to make the approach to the circle. Let's just have another look at the Ellis contact. Well, yeah, perhaps Bryant did get in underneath Ellis. That replay puts a different perspective on things when you can see that Ellis was striving straight line towards the ball and that Bryant came in underneath. So four. Break wing attack. Stewart to Hill. Last minute of the third quarter. Cox. Oh no, and that's an easy rebound for Jenke. Melbourne can charge up court and look for a five goal lead at the break. Well, the time is not on their feet yet. So it could be a punishing miss. Oh, yeah, pressure there from Ellis. That's it. Contact. It's a long-range penalty. Timer is up. And Melbourne spoils their chances. <laughs> Ambitious throw. I don't know if that was an attempt from McCormack for a big goal from halfway. Anyway, it's 39-35. Great last quarter coming up at Waverley. So Sydney have it at the start of the fourth quarter. And they'll need to score the first uh, one or two. Or create some early turnovers if they can, as Cox puts up the first shot. Let's look at the stats from the third. Well, Melbourne really benefiting from the introduction of Bryant. She slotted in nicely with 10 from 15, only 66%, but she certainly had opportunity to shoot, and that was important to them. And it's still quiet with four from eight, just the 50%, but that has gone up from 40% in the previous quarter. Sydney Sinovas, Nerida Stewart, quiet. I think 10 minutes before she put her first up and then it was four from five. And Cox very much quietened by the introduction of Taverner. She slipped down to 50%, just the five from 10. 23 shots to 15, Melbourne put up in that third quarter. 
And I just wonder if the end to our left is the scoring end. Uh, changed around the other way, I mean. Yeah. Is that because I was looking at you and yeah. staring no, through I just, <laughs> I just realised that Melbourne were running, running to our left, and I wanted to say that um, Sydney, having won the second quarter, running to the right, and Melbourne the first and third running to the right. I think uh, you know, Nola Cowan's been pretty hard on the defenders at the right-hand end. So what I mean to say is that the right-hand end might be the scoring end, and Sydney are running that way, but they're down by five. Oh, and quite a solid challenge there. Topples Ingrid Dick. I'm trying to remember the last time we saw Liz Ellis at goal defence. Well, I can't. Contact goal defender. And perhaps uh, Sydney Sinovas looking for some drive down court from Ellis. Perhaps it's not just a defensive switch. You wouldn't think they'd move Ellis out to cover Danny Arnott, who's been the lesser in terms of scoring shooters for Melbourne all match. I think the importance of Katrina Wagg to this Sydney team is emphasised by the number of changes that Sydney Sonovas had to make to cover her absence. It wasn't just a case of slotting in another wing attack. They moved Hill from wing defence to wing attack. They brought Gilmore out from goal defence to, to wing defence. Yeah, Gilmore would have moved there all the time as soon as Alison Williams is fit to play. That would have been their defensive lineup to have uh, Gilmore, I think, at wing defence with Williams and Ellis lined up. Hill, I think, is quite honestly their second preference on wing attack. I think it's more a case that she's been playing wing defence for them until they could get Williams back into the game. Well, talking to Julie Fitzgerald the other day, before they knew that Katrina Wagg was unwell, they were certainly going to be playing Reagan Gilmore at goal defence. Bryant. Melbourne's lead is uh, dwindling. I think the thing they definitely do lose when they don't have Katrina Wagg is her defensive ability, her ability to create turnovers for them, particularly under pressure. She's so strong through the mid-third. Sharon Hill's giving away some height to uh, Simone McInnes as well. McInnes now. Benison. Oh. You think these girls aren't giving 100%. Boy, there's some commitment out there. Well, just McCormack. two separates them, and McCormack's trying to narrow it. Stewart. Contact against Cox on Tavener off the ball. Tavener drives it up the side to Arnott. Benison. Arnott. McInnes offers back on the transverse line. Jocelyn Bryant. Three the lead, and with the ball, nothing given. McInnes doesn't even question. Just too fair a player, I think. Well, I guess they know that uh, to stand in question means somebody's unguarded further down the field. Cox. Just a great last ten minutes coming up here as Sydney has taken a few out of the lead. Looking to get it back to one here. Cox. Oh, no. <laughs> Jenky got the fingers to it. Another important rebound. Arnott. Ryan to Benison. Heavy clash between Arnott and McCormick, and uh, I think Arnott was surprised that it went the other way. Stewart, two back on Catherine Cox. Sydney ball. Hope these two get to play again in Adelaide, and it's been a great match. They may play the final. We don't know. <laughs> the pieces of the puzzle only just coming together. It's great to have a series that has uh, the last few matches so crucial in deciding positions for the playoffs. And the playoffs are so unpredictable. Even if we knew who was playing who, next week in 
Adelaide, you'd be a brave person to predict who the finalists would be. To the lead again for Melbourne. Nine minutes left. McCormick, Stewart. Who's got the cool head coming home? Plenty of time for it to go either way. Cox unable to find the drive to the circle. Hedges around the top. Gives Taverner the chance to drive out onto the ball. The reply tried by Gilmore. A free pass to Melbourne. It'll be taken by Taverner. Ingrid Dick. Taverner down to Benison. Selective ball given to Danny Arnott. And the crowd at Waverley starting to stamp their feet. It might be cold, but I think it's to try and get <laughs> this Melbourne team home. They've just put another one into the lead at three. Here's for four. Well, that miss, just evidence of the pressure these two teams are under. Just three, the difference. And every single ball, every placement, crucial. Hill. Every McCormick catch. takes the fumble. <laughs> oh, Good try just... for McInnes. Not many players with the presence of mind to try that. Stewart. Inter interesting decision there from McCormick. She had Cox pleading for the ball, but she ignored her and made Stewart pop out. McInnes up, acrobatics. Just what a, a great, little backup, didn't what she? What a great shot that was. I mean, she still didn't go offside. She landed out of court and clean as a whistle. She's having a fine series. I feel a little repetitive saying that. I don't know that we've ever seen her anywhere near uh, a poor performance. No. Gilmore, Hill. This is the chance to make it just the one. I can't but remember Jenke whose centre it is next. <laughs> Jenke steps out to get a piece of it. McInnes backs her up. So Melbourne now. Benison ignored Arnott then. She looked for all the world to have good position, but she had been standing there for a few seconds, and I guess Benison was uh, nervous that Ellis would come screaming out on it. So a wise decision then. So, yeah. often, so often you see a player in the clear and think, yeah, they're fine, but someone else is letting them be there to run through it. Tiny bit of breathing space for Melbourne. No, wrong, but wrong Gilmore. choice of pass then. The bounce, of course, gave Gilmore more time to come along to it. Contact against Rosalie Jenke presents Nera to Stewart with the opportunity. Sydney's 44th. Oh, sweet shooting from Nera to Stewart. Four straight and crucial shots at that. Six minutes to go. To the lead for Melbourne. They're at home. The crowd will be trying to make this another win for them. Strong take by Nerida Stewart. Cox now with the chance to make it just one. <laughs> I think she aims for the ring and lets it triple in. I don't know. She's done a lot of those this match. You think she aims for the ring and says, die when you get there? Yeah. <laughs> take a fall. <laughs> Hit the perimeter. Ingrid Dick holds the space well. Bryant. No fuss about that one for Melbourne. They got it down there and in quickly. Bryant, too great under the pressure. Seven from nine. That last one was crucial. Oh, McCormick, lucky to get that back. And that was almost single-handed possession by Ingrid Dick, but McCormick goes for the steal. Yeah, I think uh, Ingrid might have been a little unlucky. You're right. <laughs> Hill apologises to Michelle Benison on the run. Oh, Williams now wants a piece of the action. Just runs out of room. Despite the, uh, the closeness and the tenseness and the ferocity of the pace, and I really think, particularly in this last quarter, it's been played scrupulously fairly. Oh, that's, that's certainly the case. Arnott wants the two-goal lead again. We'll get a second shot at it after obstruction from Williams. Well, Darren Marks, the Melbourne physio, smiling, applauding. Well, his team be winners in uh, four and a half minutes from now. Contact wing defender. Sydney have taken two out of the three-quarter time lead of four. Cox. 
Jenkins rebounded, always was. McInnes got to settle this side. Benison. Who is stepping, costly call, and it gives uh, Sydney the chance to rectify their missed goal. We attack, contact, penalty. Contact against Sharon Hill. Ingrid Dick. Hill steals it. I don't know that that was absolutely legal then, but <laughs> thought there might have been a, con been a bit of contact on that intercept from Hill. Are you injured? Don't call time then, please. They're calling time so that they don't lose time while the ball's being gathered. Nola Callan making the point that she'll determine yeah, that, the not the players. You can understand the players' uh, feelings, though. They don't like to see it running away when they're in chase. Cox has missed a couple now to finish. Mind you, the last one was off balance. That one, no excuses. Too much on it. She's been short and long with the last two shots. They need their... Goal is firing. Sydney. She's just on 50% for the final quarter. Six from 12. And that's not a stat you want when you're trying to run at home. Ingrid Dick. Uh, the urgency doesn't have to be on Melbourne's part. It's all down to Sydney, who trailed by two. Come through the match well. She's grown with the match, I think. Ellis put under pressure. Stewart. McCormick. Still a busy player out there. That one thought about it before dropping. Julie Fitzgerald it nearly out of the chair. One of your more excitable coaches. She certainly is, and just then she's appealing to the team to defensively go for this one. We want the turnover. Oh, and the contact call goes against Alan William, Al Alison Williams. Use of the shoulder indicated by Jan Cross. So, does Jocelyn Bryant shoot? She does. Quite nicely. Back to two. Norma Plummer looks nervous. Hill, 150 to go. Stewart. McCormack has to go back for it. Cox, no, I got a little anxious. Well, Sonovas have had the chances. Couple of missed feeds, couple of missed goals. 130 to go. Wing you're causing. Ingrid Dick, Simone McInnes, Benison. It's been a great battle in the midcourt. Jocelyn Bryant, eight from ten under pressure. Arnott, just two from three, but she supported Bryant well. Bryant drives it across. Kept in. No, she wasn't. Benison put a foot over the line. A minute to go. They might just complicate it for us and make it a draw. They get a point each. Hill. Sydney have really struggled to get to the circle. Oh, they can't do it. Brilliant work from Lizzie Tavener. Tavener and Lynch in the first half have had screamers. Jenky solid all game. And I think it's going to be Melbourne's inside the last 35 seconds. And it's to the lead for Melbourne. If it's three, it's gone. Smart offload from Danny Arnott. Brian puts it in. And the crowd knows that it's going to be a Melbourne win. It's their centre pass too. So Tavener plays it back to McInnes. Wasn't expecting it, but backing up at the last second. Well, she's no slouch over a few metres, so she was quickly in to back up. And suddenly the margin blows out a little. That's going to be the final score, though, as the timekeeper gets out of his chair and lets Jan Cross know we've had the full hour and what an hour of netball it's been. Terrific play, both sides. And uh, I'm sure netball fans everywhere are pleased that these two teams are going to make it to Adelaide for the semi-finals. And whoever they play, if it's each other or contacts or Sydney Energy, we're in for some great netball. But Melbourne win this one at home, 51-47. And Sergeant is with the Melbourne captain, Simone McInnes. Thanks, Steve. Well, Simone, congratulations. You did it tough, though, but you did it well. We did. I mean, Sonova stuck with us the whole way through the match. We had our opportunities throughout to take it away, but they each time came back at us. But I'm pleased at the way that we, we held on and fought the game out to the end for the win.
great to see Janine Lynch back on court. She had fine form. She has, and she had a bit of a run on Wednesday night as well. So, I mean, it's a good opportunity to get her to get some court time in the mobile league heading into the finals. So, and she did quite well, which was good. Well, of course, now you have a few tough decisions to make in that defensive circle. You've got three uh, defenders in great form. Well, that's right. Rosalie and Liz have been playing so well throughout the, the carnival. Um, obviously, Janine's a, a, an informed player as well. So there are some tough decisions, but that's the way it is the whole way down the court as well. In goals and through the midcourt, we have a great deal of depth in the side. And um, we've really got to have a think about what we're going to do for our next match against contacts and also going into the finals. Well, you speak about the finals. These matches are great rehearsals. Have you got uh, any team there that you'd rather not play? No, I think, you know, we're keen to take on whoever it is that we're going to be matching up with in the finals. The thing is, you have to beat each team that you come up against. So, I mean, certainly uh, contacts tomorrow night and Synovus tonight and Sydney Electricity have been the informed teams as well throughout the Mobile League. So, but we're confident up against any side that we meet. Well, congratulations and good luck for the remaining matches. Thank you very much, Anne. So the rounds are all but complete. Just two matches to be played. Let's have a look at the points table. And Sydney Energy can't be caught on top with their unbeaten record. Then it's Melbourne and Contacts on 10. Sydney Synovus on 6 with a match in hand over Garvel who have played their seven matches. Then it's Queensland, the AIS and Fremantle all with a win apiece. Next Thursday night you can see highlights of the two remaining matches. Sydney Synovus playing Queensland and Melbourne against Contacts. And again those matches will be played here at Waverley. Our last prize pack goes...